Pope's throne, it's just white. It's not on a platform, it's not raised, it's not elevated. It's just a simple, like, large chair, just like anyone else would sit in. I don't think it's a commentary on what past popes have done. I think it's just, that's his style. I mean, as, um, as Archbishop in Argentina, he just lived in a single room apartment. So, I mean, we have to consider his background. But also, I think, uh, what he wants too is to really let, live in a community with his uh, fellow priests, to, to eat with them, to get to know his church and his flock. Now you see that the Pope Francis doesn't live in the palace, he lives in his own humble area and by showing the humility he invites others to be humble like him. I would argue that it is actually less simple to live in the guest house Santa Marte as he does because it creates, the Vatican is laid out in a certain way. It's not a huge city, okay, it's, it's a tiny city. And it's laid in a certain way, and that means that certain structures just, they work the way they work. The police has a certain route, the Swiss Guard has certain gates, and so forth. If you move somewhere else, um, even if it's a guest house, um, then it creates a whole set of practical problems that at the end don't facilitate work for everybody else. Um, so I think that's, that's one thing to keep in mind, that the, that the real simplicity does not necessarily have to be expressed in the outward form. The simplest way would just to do what everybody else did, which is live in the paper palace. I think the visual changes that he did make was a big step to show people that, you know, this is what the church is going to look like going forward, this is how I'm going to make it open. I'm not sure if these specific things were intended to do that, but it definitely had that result. It definitely elicited a reaction out of people all over the world saying, wow, like this is different, this is something I haven't seen before. I do think he wants us to, he wants to inspire us to also not get comfortable in luxurious lifestyles, you know, to to you know suffer a bit to make small sacrifices as well so i think i think that's what he's trying to prompt us to think it's not about how you look or appear it's not about what's on the surface it's about what kind of message you're sending as a pope as the catholic church as the word of god it's about the content it's not about what you just see visually and you don't need to be ornamented to send the message of god he sometimes himself is confounded how much people read into stuff that he does. Okay, and he says, that's not at all what I wanted. Uh, and so that he changed his throne, he didn't do that out of a reaction to uh, previous popes, or to future popes for that matter, but he did it because he just likes that throne more. Okay, and he said that on multiple occasions, I like to do this that way. I think it's a lot less intimidating you know, not that like the throne was, before was meant to be intimidating, but I think as a young person, as maybe other people that might not be completely sure of their faith, I know like among a lot of the youth there is this kind of like, you're going through a time of uncertainty, you're not necessarily sure of yourself, let alone what you believe in. And I think a church that sends a message of openness and Pope Francis sitting down and on the same level as you and having a conversation with you rather than preaching to you would much better send a message to young people. I think they're much more receptive to that kind of interaction.